go into the role of host. Now, ob obviously, we have every reason to be proud of what you've accomplished, but a choice had to be made. And so tomorrow, NBC will announce that Jay Leno has been named the next host of The Tonight Show. Uh, and I'm sure that uh, Jay will do a fine job. Uh, but I must tell you that uh, we have done this show for 10 years. And uh, we know how to do this show. Now, the best thing would have been for all of us here to have uh, gone on and have done The Tonight Show. That's what we always wanted to do. And it's a real disappointment that we're not. But if it is your final decision, uh, then you can contact my lawyer. Gentlemen, this is completely unacceptable. I want you to release me from my contract. Well, oh, what is this? I mean, <laughs> I mean, where does this leave us, Morty? I mean, uh, how, how can we make him happy? You want to keep him happy? Do as he asks. He wants the Tonight Show. Well, short of that. We have a plan for enhancing Dave's role on Late Night. We want to make it a seamless two-hour block no. right after Jay takes no, over no, the no, show. No, no, John, you don't understand. Dave wants The Tonight Show, period. Well, I, I'm afraid that just isn't possible. Why well, isn't that possible? Morty, you already have a deal with Leno? You did, don't you? Let's just say a decision has been made. A decision has been made. It's over, all right? So if you want to help us out, Morty, you tell me how NBC can make Dave enthused about doing the 12.30 show. <laughs> Morty. We'll be back. Hold my calls, Pam. OK, Mr. Martin. Oh, Morty. Uh, not bad, huh? I mean, all right. No, 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 I suck. No, Fine. you didn't but suck, Dave. You didn't suck. No, 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 there's something there. I mean, I've known those guys for Dave. Ten. I've known them Dave. for Warren Littlefield has never seen me like that. I've got a little red David, beard in David. there. They thought I was George Papard or something. It didn't work. Well, we don't know that. Yes, we do. No. Yes, we do know. They just told me in their own charming, fucking, inimitable way. They're going with Jay. As far as NBC is concerned, you're 1230. And that's it. That's it. David, I know you're depressed, but you have to keep fighting. Fighting for what? I'm fucked. I'm finished. My time is up. It's the end of the road for a uh, TV boy. David, don't get into that. Do you want The Tonight Show? Uh, why don't you uh, ask me if I want to play uh, center field for the Yankees? Of course I want the Tonight Show. It's my... <sighs> Since I was 10 years old, it's the only dream of my whole life. All right. What are you going to do about it? can't just want it. You have to do something. I have done a uh, television program on their network for the last 10 years. What do you want me to do about it? I put a, a, a penalty uh, clause in my contract if they don't give me the Tonight Show. How much? A million dollars. Oh, David, that's tip money to those guys. I, all right, I'm a pinhead, Pete. I didn't know what I was doing. Come on. I, now what do I do? I just want that show. I mean, I'm only really uh, happy that one hour a day when I'm doing my show. David, you will have a show. You're a television star. People will want to hire you. Yeah, who? CBS? CBS just fired Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak. Their gums are still bleeding. They don't want to hear the words late night ever again. ABC? ABC's got Ted Koppel on at 11.30. He's the gold standard. I'm nickel plating. So what does that lead? Syndication? Ho oh, ho, what a feeling. Can you imagine being sold by a syndicator? Uh, we got uh, Letterman or uh, Studs. You can either have uh, Studs or uh, Letterman. I'm fucked, Pete. Listen, David. Don't accept what NBC is doing to you. You simply can't. You must not follow Jay Leno, because you'll hate yourself for the rest of your life. It'll make you crazy. Yeah, but I've already lost the job to him. What else am I going to do? Uh, how about getting an agent? Oh, yeah. Now, I don't, don't reject the Come idea on. out of hand. I know how you feel about agents. 
But we need somebody with some power in the business. Yeah, I know, but Jesus, an agent? I mean, an agent's what you pull off the bottom of your shoe after a baseball game. I mean, they're just gonna book me in uh, Tahoe with Tony Orlando and Dawn. Listen, David, I have an idea. David. Uh, hey. Peter. Oh. Mike Ovitz. Hello. Please come in. It's wonderful to have you here. Well, thank, thank you. you. Please. David, I don't know if you remember this, but years ago, when you were with William Morris and I was still an agent there, yeah. we actually met very briefly. Uh, geez, I, I can't believe you remembered that. <laughs> what I remember is you were the funniest guy in the room. <laughs> in fact, I, uh, I don't think we got much accomplished that day. <laughs> Michael, uh, maybe we should tell you a little bit about David's circumstances. Peter, I know Dave's circumstances. And so I know why you're here. Dave is a star of such compelling stature that, frankly, it makes me personally angry he finds himself disabused. We pride ourselves here at CAA in developing a career plan for our clients that protects them as much as it enriches them. David has set such an incredibly high professional standard, and yet he is going disturbingly unrewarded. That just doesn't make sense. It's simply bad business practice. Obviously, we have an intense interest in establishing a business relationship with you, Dave, and with you, Peter. Frankly, we have worked out a career plan for David, and it includes securing everything for Dave that he wants. Everything. Of course, that means an 11.30 television show. Dave will be offered an 11.30 show, and he will be offered it by every network. The geometry of the deal will be far larger. The studios will be in, the syndicators, the full range of the entertainment industry. We shall frame a deal that will make you one of the giants. And if you give us the privilege of working with you, CAA will take care of everything your talents deserve and your spirit desires. Water? Huh? Oh, oh my God! <laughs> Jesus, I was like having it. I was like uh, having a meeting with the uh, the, uh, the, uh, with the, the, the the Godfather. The Godfather. <laughs> oh Hello. Hi, Warren. Good morning. Teresa told me I'd find you in the car. Good morning, Helen. How are things? Well, I've had it with the Carson people, uh, trying to get anything out of them. They wouldn't put Jay on the show. They wouldn't pass the baton. Pass the what, Helen? Pass the baton. I had this great idea. I thought Johnny should say goodbye Friday, leave his desk, take his handheld mic, walk over to our studio, and hand it over to Jay right on the air, pass the baton. And you suggested this t to whom? Peter LaSalle. He was like I peed on his shoe. Well, you know, I think they might want to finish up on their own terms, Helen. I, you know, you, you'll have plenty of time for your own ideas. We sure will, starting Monday. Huh? Now, I want to talk about the ad again. Now, you know, we've been over this, Helen, and, and, and we can't buy an ad for Jay in Friday's paper because we've already bought a full-page ad there to say goodbye to Johnny. Well, why can't NBC buy a full-page ad to welcome Jay to face Johnny's ad? Because, as I told you before, the uh, paper is doing its own full page of stories, saluting Johnny on the page opposite the ad, and uh, and we're not going to crowd that with the welcome uh, Jay ad. That's it. End of story, Helen. No, it's not the end of story, Warren. I'm telling you now, that ad's going in on Friday. If NBC won't buy the fucking thing, then I'll pay for it myself, but that ad is going in. No, it isn't going in, Helen, and it's not going to be your money, and you're not doing it because I will not allow it. We've, we've, we've thought about it, and we've listened, and we've made a decision, and that decision is final. Boy, I knew I could expect shit like this from a dickless wonder like you. Well, fuck you, Helen. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. You know, when you You're were wrong. We're not going to do this. I will not allow you it. Jay's you know what? Contract, you didn't are you? out of well, your fucking mind. Parade, I have done but I got the everything fucking show in my power anyway. to see that this man yeah, is embraced by this network. It's your only natural and talent, Warren. Fucking up. And enough. It's over. Done. This is it, huh? I am one of the lucky people in the world because I got to do something I've always wanted to do, 
and I've enjoyed every minute of it. And I can only tell you, it's been an honor to come into your homes and let me entertain you. And I hope when I do find something that I want to do, you will still invite me into your home as you always have. I bid you a very heartfelt goodbye. Is this where you want me to stand? I mean, I always stand right here, right? Where the fuck is Billy Crystal? Why hasn't he arrived yet? Stand up straight, for Christ's sake. You're the host of The Tonight Show. So, Jay, uh, how's it going? Oh, you know me. Yeah, Mr. Stress. Yeah. You look like you're ready to take a nap. Well, maybe I will. I just I, I want to get it over with, you know? Oh, you know what I want to talk to you about? I think we should lose a second Perot joke. Yeah, listen, Jay, don't you think it'd be appropriate to uh, say something nice about Johnny early in the show, you know? That wasn't my decision. Yeah, but still, I mean... Bob Wright? Him I guess I have to talk to. Go ahead. Hi, Bob. So nice of you to check in today. Thanks, Helen. I just called to wish Jay well tonight. I'm sure he's gonna have a great show. Oh, thanks. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that happens. I'm sure you are. Listen, Helen, I did have one other thought. What's Jay gonna do to thank Johnny? We're not gonna do anything. I'd like to hear why. You wanna know why? Okay, uh, the new show is gonna be entirely different from the old show. We don't wanna look like we're beholden to Johnny's old audience. Get that out of here. And every comic knows you only salute the last guy to get more applause for yourself. I mean, that's kiss-up stuff. Jay doesn't do kiss-up. I think it's a terrible mistake, Helen. I, 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 it boils down to simple politeness. Now, I would really like for you to go down there and tell Jay to say something like, I wouldn't be here but for John. No, I'm not going to go to Jay one hour before a live broadcast and tell him to insert some tribute to Johnny Carson. Absolutely not. But I appreciate your good wishes, and I'll tell Jay you called. Studios in Burbank. The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Featuring Branford Marsalis and the Tonight Show Band. Tonight, Jay welcomes comedian Billy Crystal. And musical guest, Garth Brooks. And now, I got official notice from CAA. All future business activity for David Letterman will be handled through Michael Orbitz's office. What, he office. hired Orbitz? Was he trying to get sprung? He'd have to hire God for that. Uh, well, well, let's think about this. Dave didn't hire Mike Orbitz to get a five-year deal out of us to stay at 12.30. That's not a big enough move for him. Now, this only works if he gets 11.30 for Dave. You're not listening, Warren. Dave can bring Machiavelli back from the dead. It still does not do him any good. I made this deal. Mm -hmm. We've got full protection. What is he going to do? Ovitz, huh? Put him on television in Venezuela. Come on. <laughs> this Letterman contract has clauses in it a prisoner wouldn't have. How the hell did we get him out of it? Well, Lee, give me all the bad news. Whatever deal we make, they have a right to match, and they can take a full year to match, which means they could keep them off the air if they want. <laughs> that sounds like something you'd have in the deal for a sports announcer from some local radio station. Gets worse. NBC has first negotiating position. We can't even talk a deal with anyone but them for 18 months. 
No offers. Nothing. Okay, so we don't negotiate. We can still talk to people, right? Sure, we can talk. What then? Then we set up pitches. We can't pitch Letterman around, Mike. NBC would challenge No, them. no, no. We don't pitch David Letterman to anybody. They pitch themselves to us. We reverse the process. And it's legal, too. Yes. We can't stop somebody from talking to us. Pardon me. Rod. Howard. Oh, I beg your pardon. Yes. I made the plane in 14 seconds. Glad you made it. We need we you here. All the heavyweights are coming in. I heard Eisner's going to be pitching Disney himself. Really? Well, I wish they had made it clear earlier that this was no, a true pitch. Morton called me yesterday and told me I did see me here. That's the first time I knew I had to come. All I had in the Hamptons was this old suit. And then I get on the plane, I realize I have no bloody cufflinks. Paper clips. Oh. I'm just afraid Letterman will see it and conclude that Larry Tish is an even bigger tightwad than GE, which isn't far wrong. Hello, Rod. Oh, no, we appreciate it. Hi, Howard. Thank you so much for coming. Hi, Rod. Uh, gentlemen, I'm sorry. We're under a bit of a time constraint. So I just wanted to say that we're here because we want to get acquainted with how you do business and to see how Dave might fit in with your plans. I would like to reiterate that this is not a negotiation. It is, for want of a better word, a process. So, Harold, would you like to speak first for CBS? Terrific. David, I know that you have a, an appreciation for the history and tradition of broadcasting. Much of that tradition has been written by CBS. I mean, even in England, we knew Jack Benny and Lucy and Gleason. Now, does David Letterman fit that tradition? Like a glove. The point is, the CBS of present can give you what you want, David. Affiliate strength strong management, excellent promotion, and yes, we have space available at 11.30 every weeknight. And we're a network. We're what you want, Dave. We're a home. Michael, thank you so much for coming. You have a young audience. We're the young network. We're also the only ones capable of offering you a start time of 11 p.m. That'll give you the jump on Mr. Leno. Thank you. Hi, Robert. Good to see you. Thank you so much for coming. Oh, ABC has always been the network for the young viewers. We know how to reach that audience and deliver it to you. I'm not going to say here today what we're going to do about Nightline, but... Hey, thank you Very for coming. I really appreciate it. We'll build the entire syndication operation at Columbia around David Letterman and Late Night. We expect we could launch nationally with a lineup of stations as strong as any networks. Ah, uh, Joe, well, that sounds great, Bob. Uh, Alan? <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Hi, Frank. Michael, how are you? I appreciate it all. Thank you, Good Morty. Brandon. At Paramount, we proved with Arsenio we already know how to make late night work in syndication. I think it's a perfect match. Arsenio, followed by Letterman. I'd follow the example of their nominee, Don't Inhale. <sighs> Listen to this old fool. On and on and on and on. Getting close to 11. Local news will start late. Get Warren on the phone. Great. We reschedule our fucking lives to do a live show so Jay can follow up their ghastly convention coverage with some new jokes. Then they won't let us on the goddamn air. Motherfuckers in news fucking us again. Warren, they're letting this go on. He's not going to finish by 11. I swear to you, I'm sending my audience home if you don't get this over on time. No, I'm not losing it. You said you had this under control. A pause right there. They could have cut him off. Get me Gardner in Houston. God damn it. It's 11 p.m. in the east right now. Mr. Gardner, phone for you. Helen Kushnick on the line. 
Yeah, Gartner here. You promised me you'd be off by 11, you shithead. I'm going live tonight so we can get some payoff from your horseshit convention coverage. I'm accommodating you by giving Brokaw airtime with Jay. Now, you get this gas bag, Reagan, off the air now, or I'm not using Brokaw tonight. I don't give a shit if you use Brokaw tonight or any other night, lady, and let's get something straight. I am the president of NBC News. You don't have anything to do with what I do. I'm taking you off the air this time, you pompous ass. There's only one person who can take me off the air, Bob Wright. I'll give you his number. Call him. I don't need to call Bob fucking Wright. I'll send my audience home, and then you can call him and explain why the Tonight Show wasn't on the fucking air, because the news asshole couldn't get a horseshit speech off on time. Send him home. Get him the fuck out of here. Uh, Helen, is this a good idea? I mean, can, can you do this? Hey, who the fuck made you the executive producer? You do the fucking jokes. I run the fucking show. I made the decision. They fucked us. So now they don't get a show. Get these fucking people out of here now. There is no show for them to see. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have what you might call technical difficulty right now. It's a heck of a thing. I, have you been watching the convention coverage? Could have been a doctor. Yeah, well, it's not too late, right? Oh, Rick. Uh, you know, we're running a little late, but I think we're going to be all right. The show should start, I think, around 11. Oh, that's great, Warren, but I wanted to... Uh, Would uh, yes. you hold that thought? Well, I was about to call. What, 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 you know, what the hell? Well, uh, the ship has sailed. There's, there's nobody here. Jesus Christ, she, what, she sent the audience home? We don't have a Tonight Show? You know, I've already sold this thing to advertisers. Christ! She killed the schedule of the show. My level of tolerance with Helen Kushnick is completely used up. So is ours. That woman canceled the Tonight Show with no authorization whatsoever. We had less than half an hour to get that repeat on, or we would have gone dark. She is completely out of control. That's become apparent to everybody now, Bob. Well, the problem is, what do we do about it? If we make a move on Helen now, Jay could be injured. I don't know, maybe irreparably. The guy seems to be totally dependent on it. That's his problem, not ours. It's ours if Jay walks off the show. I mean, the ratings have been solid. I hate to tamper with the show. Maybe... Maybe we should just limp along for a while. Yeah, and wait for her to self-destruct. She will soon, the way she's going. Then it won't be an issue with Jay, and we won't have to pay her off. I think it's more apparent than ever before that we should keep our options open with Letterman. If you two want to limp along with this situation for now, that's your call. But at some point, and it's getting to be soon, it's going to be my call. I'd just like to say thank you to all of you for this wonderful tribute. It has been one of the most memorable nights of my life. Thank you. Thank you, Rupert. Thank, uh, thank you, everyone. Your generosity has been greatly appreciated. Maybe it's time for us to talk, Bob. You heard about Kushnick, huh? Well, I'm not going to get in the middle of whatever it is you need to do about Kushnick, but uh, if you think it's time to get serious about doing something with Dave, I have a few suggestions. I'd like to hear them. Well, I think it's important. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Hi, good to see you. I think it's important for NBC, if you're really serious about keeping Dave, to start creating some goodwill. And there's enough animosity in this relationship to start a small war. And to my mind, it's all been stupid and unwarranted. Thank you. I'm all for goodwill. What do you have in mind? Well, we are prevented from pursuing office for David because we are required by NBC to negotiate with them first. But that clause only serves to ensure that David is not going to listen to any initial offers that you might make, generous as they may be, because naturally he's going to want to test the waters elsewhere. So we can all play this game, or we can just loosen up the chains a little bit. How? You can allow us to solicit other offers openly. After all, you still retain the matching rights. Seems like we're conceding an awful lot for the sake of goodwill. 
Maybe. Maybe you could offer something in return. Our sales department tells me that we've sold the Letterman show till the end of June. But, as you know, David's contract is up April 2nd. So, <clears throat> if we don't resign him, we'll have to return that money. Unless. <laughs> Unless we give you a three month extension. <laughs> okay. All right, so that's the deal. We give you three months, and you free us up to negotiate. Do you... Do you think David would see that as a gesture of goodwill? I believe I can assure you that he would. Mike, listen, we're ready to talk seriously now. Robert Morton on three. Morty, how are things in New York? New York is great. It's great to talk to you, too. I'm sure you're quite busy with the show. Yeah, I'm damn busy, so what's up? Well, uh, you've probably been too busy to realize you've double booked one of our guests. Apparently, you've got Roger Daltrey in the same week we've got him. Now, I'm sure this is just an oversight by your staff, but I thought I should call and just let you, uh, you know, know the way we work things. You see, we sort of always had this gentleman's agreement with Johnny. Hey, Marty, hadn't you noticed I'm no gentleman? Well, Helen, it's just that the record company is telling us you're trying to force Daltrey into canceling his appearance with us. I mean, he's our guest, Helen. He is? Well, let me help you out here, Morty. I mean, you have no power with NBC to back you up on guests. You really think NBC's gonna back your show over mine? I mean, your guy was the loser, remember? That's a cheap shot, Helen. <laughs> yeah, well, you can expect more where that came from. I mean, you have no fucking clue what's going on at the network. You're helpless. You really ought to have me do your next contract for you. I mean, you're making bupkis next to me. You know, I thought we were friends. I really did. But, you know, let me tell you something. I will fight you on adultery, and I'll fight you on every guest you try to steal. Ooh, good luck, Mighty Mouse. <sighs> Kushnick on one. Helen. Kenny, I'll get right to the point. We see Travis's billboards all over town. We want to book him. Gee, that's great, Helen. I mean, that's really nice. So when do you want to... I mean, we uh... want him this week, when he's here for the concert. Oh, gee, I'm sorry. He's on Arsenio on Wednesday. Yeah, I know. My bookers told me. So, cancel it. I mean, Arsenio's over with. He's in the toilet. His advertisers are deserting him. By the end of the year, there won't even be an Arsenio. Well, he's on the air now, and we're committed there. I guess you're not hearing me. Let me spell it out for you. If you want Travis on this show ever again, you better break that date with Arsenio. Helen. I think you need to know something about me. I mean, I don't respond well to threats. Now, look, maybe I can offer you something else. I mean, we've got a movie of the week coming up we need to promote with Kenny Rogers, Travis, and Naomi Judd. What if I could get them all on the same show? Excuse me. This ain't Merv Griffin. We don't do fucking theme shows, you dumb shit-kicking hick. Let me break the news to you. Not only is Travis Tritt not going to do The Tonight Show ever again, but you and I are going to be in this town a long time. We're going to see each other, and we're never going to talk again. I mean, it's your fucking loss, and the record companies. Ken? The booking office from Leno just called. Trisha Yearwood's appearance has been canceled. Trisha Yearwood has been booked on Leno for months. I mean, how can Helen get away with this crap? Well, I'm not going to take it. Get me Robert Hilburn at the LA Times. Brace yourself, Warren. Ken Cragen's gone public about Helen. Holy hell is breaking loose. This is it. Oh, even Jake can see she's totally out of control. <laughs> Independent verification. Oh, oh. Ah. Helen has one option. She accepts this redefinition of duties or she's off the show. Can't book guests. I don't do that already. We have bookers for that. Can't cancel guests. I've never canceled a guest, no matter what the fucking LA Times says. Cannot talk to the media. Well, that's a relief. Who needs that? This is no redefinition of my duties. It's what I've been doing all along. And if you sign this, we'll hold your feet to the flame on every issue. You know, when, when they put John Sununu out of the White House, uh, everything fell apart. You guys just want me to prove I can be a good little girl, huh? Would any of this be pulled with a male executive producer? Bullshit. Well, okay. I can be a good little girl. 
And who the fuck are you to tell me what to do? Try to control yourself, Helen. Stop fucking with me, Warren. I know what you're up to. You've made a mess of prime time. You know you can't measure up to the job Brandon did, so this is all you can do to try to save your own ass is to come after me. Hey, Warren, you know they're talking to Don Olmeyer for your job and Carrie McCluggage? So go fuck yourself, Warren. I mean, you've had a lot of practice at that, right? Helen. She'll never make it as a diplomat.